Hi there, welcome again to the subsequent video on uh, deal flow in the African market, right? In, in the last video that I did, I, I started talking about deal flow, the need for educating African business owners about the M&A journey, M&A process, transaction processes and steps, as well as the need to build trust and nurture it uh, in the African context, because guess what? In many jurisdictions across the African continent, the rule of law is relatively weak in, in many ways. So people rely less on uh, court of law to enforce uh, contracts agreement, which of course to uh, investors from places like the US or Western Europe, it's a little bit of a challenge to understand. But if you think about the Indian investors in the African market or Chinese investors, because they understand the similar market dynamics and their own countries, investing in Africa is not so different because a place like China, especially, that is just now starting to come out of that's that space of uh, chaotic environment where people rely more on trust-based business relationship than uh, contracts, agreement, and so forth, right? And it's still very common in the in the Chinese market. In the African market, trust is the currency, right? And a business owner will consider talking to a prospective buyer, a prospective investor only if they trust them, only if they see eye to eye, only if there is a good alignment in expectations, right? So, but the, the, the goal of this video, as I mentioned in, in the prior video, if, if you haven't seen it, uh, I encourage you to take a look, is really to look into some of the due diligence challenges and what can you do about them, right? Because it, there, it, it's very tempting to think, well, I'm just going to hire uh, an accounting firm, a big four or whatever, uh, a good legal team and other consultant and rely on them to do, to do the due diligence. I think that would be a, a big mistake to put your absolute faith and trust in the professionals and not be significantly involved in the due diligence process yourself because here's the reality in in many african market and a good example of you know some of the very disappointing stories actually happened in china where the business owner would collude with service provider whether it's the accountant the legal team to uh, create a fictitious scenario of their company to make them look profitable. And all these skeletons from the closet only would come after the acquisition is completed. And the reality is people lose massive amount of money. So I, I would say, right, the point of creating this video is really to share with you some of these pitfalls, big issues, and as a P firm or VC or, you know, a searcher, right, what do you need to think about? What do you need to consider in the African context? All right. So first of all, right, let, let me let me share with you what is what what uh, what the typical <laughs> businesses in, in the continent are looking like. Right. I, I'm, I make fun with my friends and tell them in Africa, we have small and medium sized enterprise. We have a gap here, right? And then we have the large entity usually owned and operated by the state. And underneath here in the middle, right? It's where private investors, private equity groups can come and buy these small sized businesses here and grow them to fill the middle to fill this middle gap that currently exists. So, right when you think about even here in the U.S., small and medium sized enterprises often lack internal control systems. 
right? Also lack really good financial reporting system. Uh, oftentimes, these businesses are operating around the, you know, the, the business owner's existence in a way, right? So in the African context, it's not really different, right? It's nothing that people haven't seen yet. And I understand some people would see that as a significantly uh, bigger risk for investors because of this lack of governance system in place. However, if you think about it, this is also an opportunity for investors or uh, buyers to come in and add value while growing the business and setting up these uh, systems in place. So a lot of small businesses across the continent who are operating their businesses today, they grew, their main priority, right, has been I need to grow the business, I need to you know, make a living for myself, for my family. I need to think about how to make this business work, how to uh, make this business, this business succeed. That has been the focus. And they got caught up in this going and going and going without necessarily thinking about governance because they are their own govern governance system. They If they fail to succeed in the business, their life gets impacted. So when an investor is approaching these businesses, often they're not going to have, you know, clear segregation of duty in, in place, for example. There's not going to be, you know, financial reports to be delivered to you. And if you ask them to put them together, it can take months for that to happen, for example. And sometimes if you engage in a knotted firm or a consulting firm to provide assistance, right, it, it becomes even more expensive to conduct the due diligence. So an alternative to that actually is what, uh, my, what my friends and I do in the African context. We have extensive conversation with business owners, right, to help them put together their business in, in business affairs in order, right? So it, throughout the conversation, the goal is to understand how the business actually operates, first of all, right? How does it generate revenue? What are the major expenses, right? And we also try to contrast that with what we know about the business owner living uh, quality, right? If they are claiming to run, a, you know, just think about what goes into the mind of an IRS auditor. IRS, uh, for those who are outside of the U.S., is the Internal Revenue Services in the U.S., so the, the tax authority in the U.S. So think about an IRS agent or in, in, inspector, investigator, whatever. What is their mindset? The bottom line is to understand the cash, the income of that is supporting a certain lifestyle of the owner, for instance. If the owner lives in uh, a five-bedroom house in a gated community in, the, in, in one of the African, uh, you know, capital city, right, you have to develop certain estimate of what that lifestyle could cost, right? What's their family size? Do they have other relatives they support? Which is very common. You know, uh, I am an African and, you know, growing up, my father would help a lot of uh, his nephews and nieces. Like literally every month, you know, he would send money to pay for their schools and sometimes even to help with food because, that's the type of culture we have. Those who are well off help. Those who are less fortunate in their families or even neighborhood. So understanding all these dynamics helps you understand a little bit also about the business, right? 
So we going back to what I was saying, you know, you kind of through through that conversation, you are building expectations around the income, right, to support the business owner themselves and all of other expenses around their lives, but also to run the business, right? They pay employees, they pay for utilities, they pay for if it's a, a product driven business what what's the cost of building the product the goods they are selling right so it's really a lot about building expectations and the unit economics and drivers of that business before you even you know realistically think about the whole picture in terms of the financial reporting so i would encourage investors to be proactive in due diligence in the African market, right? We're already at 10 minutes and, and I don't really want to go long, but the, the bottom line here is in, in the African market, right? Beyond the business themselves, you have to understand the living situation, the, the you know, the, the, the imp- other pieces that are relevant and important to the business owner, their lifestyle, uh, where they live, who they support, what other responsibilities they have, and make educated guesses uh, around these, you know, how they support all these, excuse me, all these, all of, or their entire lifestyle. So by doing so, you can reasonably start to develop the actual unit economics and drivers about the business, right? So it's a big part of understanding and studying the due diligence process. And and maybe in, in, in another video, I'm going to give you, actually, I did a video uh, probably a month or two ago to t- talking about how we literally reconstructed an income statement and balance sheet of an education business uh, through a due diligence process because that's really common to do in in many markets across the African continent. So um, this has been a pleasure and I'm open to having conversations and uh, exchanging ideas, sharing notes with folks who are uh, interested in the African market and hopefully supporting some of you with your due diligence and, and so forth. So uh, as I wrap up this video, I want to encourage you to share your experience with the rest of us if you are an investor in the African market, if you agree or disagree with anything that I shared. And uh, I look forward to connecting.